to easy tutorials in this video we are going to see how to represent a graph so first why we should represent the graph so uh, pictorially we are seeing the graph so if you want to store that in the uh, computer for programming purpose you need to have some representation of graph so that is why we need to represent a graph so representing a graph is to store it vertices and edges in a program so you need to store the vertices and edges of a graph for using that in the program that is why we need to represent graph so what data structure you can use for graph representation you can use arrays and list for representing a graph so what are the methods present for representing a graph three methods are present so the first one is adjacency matrix representation the second one is adjacency list representation and the third one is incidence matrix representation so if matrix is involved uh, it is obvious that you use array so the uh, adjacency matrix representation and incidence matrix representation we use array then for the middle one adjacency list representation so the name itself is having list so we'll be using both arrays and list so let us see how to represent the graph let us see the representation of graph the first method is adjacency matrix representation so in adjacency matrix representation you will be using an array so a two dimensional array you will be using and uh, you will be having like this so if you are taking a graph you have to note what are all the vertex so 0 through 4 you are having same way you have to have indexing for both rows and columns 0 to 4 so for rows also 0 to 4 for columns also 0 to 4 you have to have then where are all the edges present like that you have to see if an edge is present between 0 and 1 the intersection of the 0 and 1 should have 1 if there is no edge you have to put 0 so the concept is uh, if you are considering this as i and j any two nodes you take let them be i and j if there is a edge between i and j the intersection point should be filled with 1 otherwise it should be filled with 0 so that is the point in adjacency matrix representation you will be using a 2d array uh, so if there are n uh, vertices you will be getting an n cross n matrix so in a i j is equal to 0 if there is no edge and if an edge is present you have to mark a i j as 1 so I, a i j in the sense the intersection point of this i n j so if there is an edge between 0 and 1 so here 0 and 1 this also will be having 1 and 1 and 0 this also will be having 1 which means in an undirected graph a i j and a j i will be equal to 1 so this is the meaning for that so let us see an example with an undirected graph as well as a directed graph so first consider this undirected graph now we are going to form an adjacency matrix for this so you are having 0 to 4 so 0 to 4 i have filled uh, as an index for rows and columns so uh, there are no self loop so 0 0 1 1 2 2 all the self intersection point will be filled with 0 because there is no self loop now take the first row 0 so with 0 you are having edges for 1 and 4 so 1 and 4 alone will be filled with 1 other all will be filled with 0 now 1 so 1 is having edge for 0 2 3 4 except self loop all other possible edges are present so except 1 all the entities will be filled with 1 1 since no self loop 0 then 2 second node you are taking 1 and 3 you are having edge so in 1 and 3 alone you will be uh, filling with 1 and other all entries should be 0. Now consider the third vertex. For 0 you are not having 1, 2, 4 you are having. So 0 and 3 you will be having 0 and other all things you will be having 1. So fourth one uh, 0, 1 for 2 you are not having, 3 you are having. Uh, self loop you are not having, 4 to 4 you are not having. So except 2 and 4 you'll uh, you'll have all other entities and one two and four will be zero and other things will be one clear so we have formed the adjacency matrix so this uh, 0 1 2 3 4 this rows and column index is for your 
understanding you can write this with pencil and uh, this is the actual adjacency matrix you have to enclose it with matrix bracket clear now let us take an example for directed graph so consider this directed graph here you should consider the outgoing edge uh, suppose you are having an edge between 1 and 2 from 1 you are having an outgoing edge to 2 so for 1 to 2 your, your value will be 1 whereas from 2 to 1 your value should be 0 you are seeing the sum it will be more clear so now let us take the first uh, node so from 1 to 5 I am having nodes so 1 to 5 I have written in rows and columns here as uh, index this is for our convenience only we are writing this 1 2 3 4 5 you can write this with pencil so now 1 so what are all the possible outgoing edges present here 2 3 and 4 so for 5 and 1 you don't have any edge so for 5 and 1 you have to put 0 and for 2 3 4 you have to put 1 clear now 2 so for 2 here you are getting an incoming edge here also are getting an incoming edge from 1 and 5 so you should not consider 1 and 5 whereas if you are considering 2 from 2 to 3 you are having a double sided arrow mark which means you have link between 2 and 3 so for 2 in 3 alone you will be having 1 and all other entries will be 0 now 3 so 3 you are having only one outgoing edge to 2 no more edge so for uh, 2 alone you will be having 1 and other all entries will be 0. Here if you are considering 4 you don't have any outgoing edge except the self loop. So 4 is going to 4 itself self connected this is self loop. So if you are having such loop for 4 to 4 the intersection between 4 and 4 should be marked as 1. You are not having any more edges. So, except for all the things you have to put 0, in 4 alone you will have 1. Consider 5, you are having only one outgoing edge that is for 2. So, in 2 alone you will be putting 1 and all other entries will be 0. So, this is how you have to mark the adjacency matrix for any graph, directed or undirected graph. Suppose you are having a weighted graph means how you have to do like that we will see with this example so this is my weighted graph so in weighted graph uh, instead of marking 0 and 1 you will be marking the weightage itself so in wherever you are having 1 you have to mark the weightage of that edge instead of 1 means edge is present 0 means edge is absent but now if you are if it is a weighted graph you are uh, representing the weights so you should not put 0 so 0 means it means it is a minimal distance so in the case of weighted graph if you are not having edge you have to put infinity so infinity means uh, the weight weight will generally be the cost or distance or time so whatever it is uh, suppose you are the weight represent cost means so if there is no edge between 1 and 4 here in this example so from 1 to 4 the weight will be infinity you should not put 0 0 means it will be a minimal value so it, you have to travel so much time so you are not having any direct link so it is infinity like that you have to mark in the case of weighted graph alone so now uh, wherever you are having edge you have to mark wherever you are having edge you have to mark uh, the corresponding weightage if edge is absent you have to mark infinity but for the same node that is 1 to 1 2 to 2 3 to 3 if there is self loop you have to mark that uh, value else you have to mark uh, 0 for 1 and 1 2 and 2 the intersection of uh, same numbers you have to mark 0 for uh, edges not present you have to mark infinity and uh, if edges present you have to mark the corresponding weight so for 1 you are having how many outgoing edge only to 2 you are having so in 2 alone you will be having 25 in 1 same node so here you will be having 0 for all other thing you have to mark infinity like this clear so one more node we will see so 2 what are all the outgoing edge so this is an incoming edge you should not consider so this is an outgoing edge uh, so uh, to 3 it is 10 to 4 it is 14 so to 2 itself you have to mark 0 so for 1 infinity 2 0 
3 and 4, 10 and 14 you have to mark, 5, 6, 7 you don't have outgoing edge, so you have to put infinity. Likewise, you have to mark. So, 3 and 3, the intersection of same numbers you have to put 0. If edge is present, you have to put that values. If edge is absent, you have to mark infinity. This is how you have to fill. So, try this and check whether you are getting this answer or not. For all the nodes, you have to form and it will be a 7 cross 7 matrix like this. So, in adjacency matrix, how many number of nodes you are having, that much amount of rows and columns you will be getting. So, here 7 nodes, so 7 cross 7 matrix you are getting. Clear? So, the next one, adjacency list representation. So, in adjacency list representation, you will be having uh, a list as well as array. So, only the initial uh, vertex address you will be storing in an array and from that you will be forming a linked list. So, uh, this will be a list. Uh, uh, if you are seeing the example, it will be more clear. So, if you are considering this graph 0, so from 1 and 4 you are having uh, edges. 0 has neighbors 1 and 4. So, you have to mark like this 0, 1, 4. So, zero, 1 to 4 you are having which means it does not mean that 1 and 4 have connectivity. So, zeros neighbors are 1, 4. Now, consider 1. So, 1's neighbor are 2, 3, 4, 0. So, you have to mark 0, 4, 2, 3 in any order you can mark. So, you have to mark a make a linked list like this. Just the uh, all these vertices should be present in an array and from this array you have to create a linked list. So, for 2, you are having only 2 neighbors, 1 and 3. So, you can put 1, 3, you can also put 3, 1. So, at the end, you should mark null, which means only the neighbors are over. That is the meaning. Same way for 3, you are having 1, 2 and 4. Here, we mark 1, 2 and 4. In any order, you can mark. Last uh, node, you have to mark with uh, null. Now, 4, if you are considering 0, 1, 3. 0, 1, 3 in any order you can put uh, with the last node having null. So, this is how you have to create adjacency list representation. So, here you are having only two components, one for uh, storing the next address and one for storing the neighbor. If it is a weighted graph, you can have three components, one for storing the neighbor and uh, one for uh, storing the weight between 1 and 2. So, like this you can also marker. Now, uh, for this directed graph, 1, 2 and 3 are the neighbors. 2, 3 and 4 are the neighbors. So, 2, 3, 4. For 2, only 3 is the neighbor. So, only 3. For 3, only 2 is the neighbor. So, 2 alone I have marked. For 4, self loop is there. So, 4 alone is the neighbor. For 5, only 2 is the neighbor. So, 2 I have marked. This is how you have to do for directed graph. So, in the case of directed graph, you have to see only the outgoing edge. Clear? Now, uh, we will see uh, this uh, weighted graph example. For 1, you have only one outgoing edge that is for 2, that is uh, having the weight 25. So, 2, 25, null. You can write null or nil or you can put a cross mark. Anything you can do. For uh, second vertex, you are having two outgoing nodes are 3 and 4. So, the corresponding weights are 10 and 14. So, 3 has 10, 4 has 14. So, you have to mark an array like this. For 3, only uh, you are having two uh, edges. So, to 1 and to 6. So, for 1 it is having 5 and for 6 it is having 16 as weight. So, likewise you have to complete. Clear? For 5, you do not have any outgoing edge. So, here itself you can write null or you can put a cross mark. So, this is the array information and this is the list information. Combining the array and list, we create adjacency list representation. Now, the last representation is incidence matrix representation. So, incidence matrix representation, it will be similar to adjacency matrix representation, which means you form a 2D array. In the 2D array, one side you will be having list of edges and one side you will be having list of vertices. So, this is an example for that. So, here this is an example graph. Uh, this is an undirected, unweighted graph. So, for this, I am having edges E1, E2, E3 and vertices V1, V2, V3. 
so v1 to v5 i am having vertices and uh, edges i am having so in this row wise i'll be writing vertices and column wise i'll be writing the edges so how many edges i am having i am having totally eight edges so e1 to e8 i have written and i am having five vertices v1 to v5 i have written so if the, uh, there is a connectivity so consider v1 so for v1 what are all the edges uh, available e1 e2 e3 and e5 so in e1 e2 e3 and e5 you have to mark one and other things you have to mark zero that is e4 e6 e7 e8 you have to mark zero now take the second vertex only two edges are going e1 and e4 so for e1 and e4 you have to mark one and for all other e2 e4 e5 e6 till e8 you have to mark zero so wherever there is an edge connectivity with this vertex you have to put one for other things you have to put zero so for v3 if you are considering you are having one two three four that is e4 e3 e7 e8 you have to mark one e e3 e4 five edges you are having four edges you are having e3 e4 e7 e8 so e3 e4 e7 e8 now v4 if you are considering one two three edges you are having e5 six eight so for five six and eight you have to mark one for all other things you have to mark zero for last vertex v5 here 1 2 3 e2 e7 and e6 e2 e6 and e7 i am marking 1 and other entries i am marking 0 so uh, adjacency incident matrix representation adjacency matrix representation means adjacent means two vertices only can be adjacent so uh, you are writing vertex on rows and column whereas incident matrix means edges will be incident on vertex so one side you have to write the vertices and other side you have to write the edges like this this is how you have to uh, form matrix for incidence matrix representation so you are uh, visually seeing a graph but a computer program cannot see this graphs for that uh, reason we have to make representations using zeros and ones in the form of arrays or array list uh, so the three forms we saw uh, in the next lecture, we will be seeing few more algorithms in uh, graphs. Stay tuned to easy tutorials. Uh, share this video with your juniors and friends. Like, share, subscribe and comment to easy tutorials. Thanks for watching.